We've seen how the Adagapi steel, a monument from the time of Nabonidus, confirms the Neo-Babylonian chronology, listing the names of the kings of Babylon and how long each reigned. What is more, it lists a 95-year period from the birth of Adagapi until the accession of Versan Nabonidus that leaves no room for any gaps between kings. The Adagapi steel is not our only line of evidence that seals off the idea that there could be gaps of time between the known kings. Previously, we've discussed the Gibi banking records that trace the family heads of a bank for an 81-year period from Nebuchadnezzar to the Persian king Darius. This too allowed for no gaps. Let us go back a bit to the Adagapi steel. In column 1, note the following passage. Whereas in the sixteenth year of Nabopolazar, king of Babylon, Sin, king of the gods, with his city and his temple was angry, and went up to heaven, the city and the people that were in it went to ruin. What city and temple is being mentioned here? We find the answer further down, towards Ehalhal, the temple of Sin, which is in Haran, the abode of his heart's delight. He was reconciled, he had regard. The temple in Haran was ruined in the 16th year of Nabopolazar, a fact we can confirm by the Babylonian Chronicles. But the temple was not to remain in a ruined state forever. The Nabonidus cylinder of Sippar relates a dream that the king had when he ascended the throne. In the beginning of my everlasting reign they sent me a dream, Marduk, the great lord, and Sin, the luminary of heaven, and another world stood together. Marduk spoke with me, Nabonidus, king of Babylon, carry bricks on your riding horse, rebuild Eholhal, and cause Sin, the great lord, to establish his residence in its midst. At that time, Nabonidus began to rebuild the ruined temple. Why is this of any relevance? Because of information found in the hill of steel, which describes the period of time that the temple remained in ruins. It reads in part, as to the temple Ehalhal in Haran, which was in ruins for 54 years, through a devastation by the Manda hordes, the sanctuaries were laid waste, the temple predestined by the gods, the moment for the appeasement to wit 54 years had come near, when Sin should have returned to his place. Now Sin, the crown-bearer, did return to his place and remembered his lofty seat, and as to all the lesser gods who had moved out with him from his shrine, it was again Marduk, the king of all the gods, who ordered me to gather them. Here, in the Hill of Steel, Nabonidus describes a 54-year period where the temple of Haran was in ruins, a period which ended in his accession year, when he began to rebuild it. We know from other sources that the temple was ruined in the 16th year of Nabopolazar. Therefore, from the 16th year of Nabopolazar until the time Nabonidus ascended the throne was a span of 54 years. We know that Nabopolazar reigned for 21 years, so if we subtract 16 years, the remainder of his reign after the temple was ruined would be 5 years. We know that Nebuchadnezzar ruled for 43 years. His son Amal Marduk ruled 2 years. We know that Nergal Sharizar ruled 4 years. If we add it all up, we come to 54 years. As with the Adagapi steel, this shows there could be no gaps between the reigns of Nabopolazar and Nebuchadnezzar, between Nebuchadnezzar and his son Abel Marduk, between Abel Marduk and Nergal Sharizer, and between Nergal Sharizer and Nabonidus. The period from the 16th year of Nabopolazar until the accession of Nabonidus was 54 years, which harmonizes exactly with the thousands of economic tablets, with the Agibi banking records, and with the Adagapi steel. There are simply no extra kings, no extra years, no gaps. For more digging, one could research SACF-165, an inventory tablet of wool over a five-year period from the 15th, 16th, and 17th year of Nabonidus until the first and second year of the Persian king Cyrus. 
showing there were no kings or gaps between the last Babylonian king Nabonidus and Cyrus the Great. Or perhaps one could research NBC 4897, a bookkeeping tablet that tabulates livestock over a 10-year period from the 37th year of Nebuchadnezzar through the two-year reign of his son Abel Marduk to the first year of Nergal Sharizer. Time would fail us if we would bring up every bit of evidence that seals the gaps, as it were. But what has been presented thus far shows there is no room for one additional year, much less the 20-year gap that would be needed for Jerusalem to have been destroyed in 607 B.C. rather than 587 B.C. At what point does enough become enough?